I'm very happy to be with Mark Sharman again, and he's going to talk today about the process of making his new documentary, which is called The New World of Fool's Paradise. Over to you, Mark. Thank you, Catherine. Nice to see you again. Um, yes, I mean, I must say I'm quite embarrassed about not having this film ready by deadline. It, it, I've been in the media for, you know, 55 odd years. I don't think I've ever missed a deadline. But this is a very complex film. And um, it's been a bit like a builder attacking an old house. You know, every panel we've taken away and every door we've opened, there's something else behind it. Um, Patricia Sharman's working with me on this and she does a lot of the digging and research. And, you know, she probably sends me 10 WhatsApps a day with more material. Um, it, it's it's a very dark subject. I mean, I think we started out at one level and we could have about five or six levels in there. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, if you believe that the United Nations is part of a, uh, a plot that's backed by the big banks to basically change the Western world, um, you have to, you have to really try and prove it. And the, the deeper we got, the further back in years it went, you know, we went all the way back to the club of Rome in the mm. 1960s. I mean, and, and what becomes apparent is um, we think we live in a democracy and have been living in a democracy and actually so much of world events, so many of world events have been controlled by the money men. Um, and it's, it's actually been quite, um, it's quite been quite a chilling experience to mm -hmm. to discover things. I mean, I've looked back on my own career, um, you know, running network news events and thought, well, why did we accept that at face value? But of course mm -hmm. we did, because I don't think we ever realized the level of control um, that was being put on governments. You're really in a very privileged position, aren't you? Because you've had over 55 years working in the media and you've seen a lot of these events firsthand and reported on them. And just when, well, after when most people would be retiring, you are now using all that experience that you've had to, to help people and to, um, I would say, probably uh, save our lives through bringing life-changing information into people's well, awareness. Yes, that's a bit dramatic, but I mean, we, 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 what we're trying to do is bring it at least make mm. people think and say, look, mm. this, we think this is happening, mm. make your own mind up. But it's pretty hard to say to uh, say to people, you know, are you really sure that carbon is causing climate change mm. and is the climate change really happening? Because there is such a weight of, of information saying that it is. Um, mm. And that's pretty, pretty hard. Um, and, and, and yet the, the IP... to one of the other reasons we we late with it is because I always say don't do issues, do stories. Right. And with Safe and Effective, uh, the previous film we made, it was really built around people's individual stories, hmm. which um, you can engage then with the audience at an emotional level. This this one's much harder because it's an issue and it's several issues intertwined, um, which is why it's been so difficult. But just on the media. I mean, I've been on record before. I've been ashamed of my profession, really, or trade, as I prefer to call it, because through COVID, um, they didn't ask any of the right questions at all. They accepted everything at face value and were part of the propaganda of building the um, the severity of, of, of the pandemic, uh, probably beyond what it really was. But... Um, what we've discovered since, of course, is there were tie-ups with the American government agencies, the UK government agencies, and it wasn't a coincidence that the governments and the media across the Western world were saying exactly the same thing in exactly the same way. And unfortunately, uh, climate change is the same. I mean, there's been a um, a lot of there's been a, a centralization of, me, of media ownership anyway i think in america there's about six companies own everything mm -hmm. um which so the level of control is is um becomes much deeper and much stronger and you've also got the social media companies who are 
tied in and they also censor. So what's been happening in climate change is that um, the media push only one side of the story. No one ever into is a climate scientist who, who asks any questions. And what we've discovered um, is that there are organizations who are working with the media to make sure that the climate stories are maximized. Um, there's a company, an organization called Carbon Literary Training, which mm -hmm. boasts that they've trained a thousand BBC employees in carbon literacy. Mm -hmm. uh, but even worse in the States, um, there is something called cl Covering Climate Now, which mm -hmm. most of the major media organizations are part of, including uh, Channel 4 News and The Guardian. Um, and ef effectively, they they're set up to teach journalists how to maximize climate events to push the narrative mm -hmm. and advise against, and I use the word advise, it's a little bit more than advice, but let's <laughs> say advise against any counter stories. Mm -hmm. So there is, as the scientists we've spoken to will tell you there is no correlation between extra floods, tornadoes, fires, mm -hmm. heat waves, but one of the tactics of the media is to maximize every fire, every flood, yes, every um, every event like that, and call it climate change uh, when it isn't. It's just weather. It's um, weather, and interestingly, it, yeah. that noise in the background is Devon hail. If you can mm. hear it, um, hammering yeah. hard against the yes. window, which, as you speak about climate, mm. has appeared. Yeah. Yes, that... but it, it's almost. It, it... You know, it's all, it's fantastic to think that humans can affect the climate really mm. when it's in this world that moves around the sun and mm. you know is on various axes and and the mm. climate has changed for years but i'm not a climate scientist and i'm not going to make that argument yes. but from the media point of view it's very very clear that they are being controlled to push mm. to maximize the climate change narrative so that every weather event every weather event is turned into a climate a, a climate cause and a climate crisis when it's just not true. I mean, uh, and unfortunately, you know, if you've got outside forces running the media, you cannot trust anything they tell you anymore. Right. Um, it's a very, for me, as a trained journalist, it's a very sad state of affairs because your whole reason was to question mm. and was to be impartial and was to get to the bottom of things. And... Um, you know, we definitely saw that, you know, uh, and we're still seeing it over vaccine injuries. They still weren't really accepted and write about it. Uh, and climate change is just a no-no. I mean, you know, broadcasters and newspapers win awards for their climate coverage. Yes. You know, it's a, it's very much um, the game. But in our film, we'll suggest that climate change is just the trick to pull the mm. world together. And they play on the, it's a, it's very clever, Catherine. They play clever. on they play on fear first of all, just with the same mm. with COVID. Fear first of all, and then they appeal to your community spirit for the greater mm. good. Mm. And what a, this this kind of virtual signaling that, that 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 goes on, and and that's you know they've been developing developing that kind of behavioural science for a long time, mm. and they're using the fear of climate change and your responsibility to the community. And goodness me, the schools have been indoctrinated with this the whole mm. time. Um, they're using that situation. So gradually we're believing and believing and believing and doing mm. as we're told in more and more scenarios, which makes it much easier to suddenly say, right, for the climate sake, you can only buy this much and you can mm. only do that much and you can't fly and you can't drive. And you can, um, and it's that's it's a much darker agenda than would appear on the surface. Thank you, Mark, for exposing it in, in that way. And yes, it gives a whole a new dimension to the term media spin, really, doesn't it, what you're mm. talking about? And um, it's, it's great that you and your team are reversing that trajectory and bringing and bringing journalism and back to where it it should be and we're very fortunate to have you speaking at our event and this is our event for those of you who didn't catch it if you'd like to um whoops if you'd like to book your tickets you can go to eventbrite 
society C or free. Thanks so much. Thanks.